its health benefits, uh, how it can be used for uh, all of the uh, uses that hemp would provide, uh, all the medical benefits we can get for it. If he were to, the nutrition of hemp seed, my God, if he was to point out all of that, it would be obvious to our school children that the keeping it illegal is not any sort of consistent strategy from our government. Decades now. Well, we've only kept it to four hours in a healthcare class about drugs and maybe four hours about nicotine. It has to be across the whole continuum. I, mean, I remember when I was age. a little boy growing up in Buffalo, New York. I heard all those stories, the horrors of drugs. And we, we were taught that, and, and I assume well, since then all the kids are taught about One, we that. don't want to use scare tactics, and number two, we want to use the evidence-based systems, and that's what the most recent analysis tells us. Across the board, well, we would love to see some evidence-based uh, education when it comes to uh, drugs. That would be really nice, especially with regard to marijuana. But don't be fooled by the drug czar's rhetoric here. They keep talking about how they want to have a balanced approach. They want to put more toward prevention, more toward treatment. We've got to treat it holistically. You're going to hear a lot of that. But this graph will just show you. It's not really a graph. It's more of a chart here. This is the Obama balanced approach to drug war funding when you actually take a look at the numbers in the budget. Treatment and prevention get get $5.6 billion in the Obama drug war budget. Law enforcement and interdiction get $9.9 billion. It's a nearly two to one ratio, just like it was during the W. Bush administration, just like it was during the Clinton administration. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Board, quality advisors giving kids the right piece of information. Is this going to make a dent? It, it does. If you do it, I agree again across the board. And Nancy Reagan's statements were underrated. A lot of the kids like those statements. They like because it was clear. Just say no. It's a heck of a lot better statement than if it feels good, do it. It's a lot. Okay, wait a minute. Who was putting out if it feels good, do it? Uh, are you trying to throw that on us at normal or any of the drug law reform organizations? No. Look, the Nancy Reagan just say no era, those messages have been studied. The fried egg, you know, this is your brain on drugs, the, the running over the girl at the drive-thru, the shooting your friend with the pistol. The cartoon all-stars. The cartoon all-stars. It's all been debunked, and it has been found that the government spent money, billions of dollars, on these programs, and not only did they not dissuade kids from using drugs, in some cases, it enticed them into using drugs. Those ads were a failure, and Bill Bennett is calling for more of the same. It's a lot clearer. You want that statement, but you also want sound education programs and sound policies in the schools. Problem is, kids get a message of ambiguity from adults, and when you have this legalization stupidity out there, uh, you're going to have more more young people confused. Other than uh, okay, let me address this legalization stupidity. This is a chart showing you the support for marijuana legalization in poll after poll. The green line indicates the rising support of people that say we should legalize marijuana. The red line shows the declining support for keeping it prohibited like it is now. So if you're talking about legalization stupidity, you're talking about 43% of the American people that are stupid. Also, I'd kind of like to point out the uh, drug war budgets here. Uh, you know, Bill Bennett's got 50, or the drug czar and, 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 and the entire federal government have $15.5 billion to spend on the drug war. By comparison, those of us who are doing drug law reform, I've got the graph up now, this red line indicates the billion of dollars that the uh, the 15.5 billion dollars that the federal government has to spread their message about the drug war. Meanwhile, we have maybe combined from all drug war uh, drug reform policy organizations, normal MPP, DPA, Safer, SSDP, ASA, and so on. We might have a million dollars between us. So for some reason, our message with only a million dollars worth of funding has caused 43 percent of the American American people to buy into this so-called legalization stupidity while 15.5 billion dollars spent by the federal government has shown nothing but increasing uh, rates of drug use have shown the increasing purity of hard drugs a decrease in the price of hard drugs and 23,000 Mexicans slaughtered south of our border to maintain this prohibition on marijuana uh, you're not you, you don't like that uh, you're not hearing enough directly from the president on this right. issue is there a, any basic problem you have with the Obama administration's efforts to deal with this issue no, not really again I'd like more attention more publicity 
Uh, there are a lot of things going on. We understand what competes for attention. But this strategy, if people read it, I think would be very impressive. It's a clear moral message, and it talks about working on a variety of fronts. I think it's quite good. But what you had back in the 80s uh, was... Let's go back to this more uh, about that he expects more from President Obama on this war against drugs. This might be kind of tough when President Obama said this. Look, I, you know, I uh, when I was a kid, I... I uh... Uh, I inhaled uh, frequently. That was uh, that was that was the point. That was the point. So we're not talking about a guy that you know just puffed once, uh, experimented with it. This is a guy who had some real experience with using uh, marijuana. He's also uh, quoted as saying that he wanted us to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. So maybe President Obama's not the best guy to put on the bully pulpit for just say no was an entire society mobilized and this is what leadership does you did have all those ads the guy jumping off the diving board into an empty swimming pool this is your brain on drugs this is the two fried eggs because the society decided it wanted to push back those public service it pushed back see more it went down and we can do that again no, again, like I pointed out, those ads were shown to be failures in keeping kids off drugs. But let's also remember what was going on in the 80s with the uh, CIA and the Contras and funneling cocaine into America, the crack cocaine epidemic, when every newscaster was coming on the air and the president was coming on the air saying, this is the big new drug. It's called crack. It will get you really, really, really high. It's super addictive. It's really cheap. So don't use it. Whatever you do, don't use the crack. It's really Really, really, really powerful. Don't use it. Basically, an advertising campaign for crack cocaine that caused us to have so much problems in the cities and, and problems with crack addiction that all drugs got demonized as a matter of course. They said, oh, marijuana would lead to crack. Look how bad crack is. That's been shown to be false as well. We find that for every 108 people who ever use marijuana, only one, only one goes on to use any other sort of hard drug. Yeah, up. the president asked for $66 million in those advertisements, and those advertisements are directed towards specific groups. In fact, just last week, we released the strategies for meth on reservations in tribal nations for those kids. Those are targeted directly to that youth group, and we're going to continue to do those things. Well, that's that's a wonderful program. Absolutely. Let's target meth abuse on Native American reservations. But remember, Gil, every single dollar you spend fighting against marijuana, fighting against legalization, trying to prevent people from using cannabis in their own personal uh, private lives, every dollar you spend on pot is a dollar you're not spending to help Native American youth to get off meth. It's a dollar you're not spending to help people in the cities get off crack cocaine. It's a dollar that you're not spending to help junkie in the inner city with some sort of uh, heroin uh, treatment. It's a dollar that you're not spending on people getting alcohol treatment. It's a bed in a treatment facility that's filled with a marijuana offender who had to choose between jail or rehab, a bed that could better be served for somebody with a serious drug addiction rather than someone who's, who's only doing time there to stay out of incarceration. You are wasting our money every year. You are wasting lives every year. The prohibition of marijuana hurts people even that don't smoke marijuana. It's time to end this. The American people are on our side and we are going to continue with legalization. Drug czars be damned. Joe Terlikowski, thanks very much for coming in. Bill Bennett, thanks for this you discussion. Bet. Let's hope thanks. you make a dent. Uh, we're counting on you. Good. Oh, there we go. That's from the uh, Situation Room, uh, CNN's uh, Wolf Blitzer and uh, drug czar Kurlikowski and drug czar Bill Bennett, the uh, first drug czar. Uh, thanks for checking that out. You can catch it at MoxNews.com. And we've gone long here at Normal Show Live, but that's cool because once I get rolling, I got to keep rolling. For everybody here at Normal Show Live, for uh, Ganja John and Cannabis Carry, thanks for tuning in. And we want to thank everybody who is a fan of the show. Please tell your friends. Uh, tell them about live.normal.org every week day, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, with replays at 3, 5, 7, and 9. Follow me on Twitter, at Radical Russ, for all the latest updates. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers.
This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it.